This is Terry McCauley, Coordinator of Football Officiating for the Big East Conference. And this is the next in our 2012 series of instructional videos. This video will address offensive holding, which is unique in that it is arguably the only foul in which we must make one and often several real-time decisions on every play of the game. It requires strict attention to your key or keys, the ability to recognize whether there is a grab or hook, and most importantly, whether there is obvious material restriction. In this video, we will categorize the types of holding that may occur. We will discuss what is and what is not material restriction either at the point of attack or away from it. We will discuss mechanics, particularly with respect to interior line play, on how our referee, umpire, and line of scrimmage officials can adjust and work together based on various formations and reads. There are three types of offensive holding fouls. Grasp and restrict, hook and restrict, and takedowns. And when we talk about takedowns, this is any action that illegally takes a defender to the ground. First, let's talk about running plays up the middle, probably the most common area where we see offensive holding. On, on this play, we're going to look at the center. And, and even though we can't see his hands, we know what he's doing. He's got an inside grab of the opponent, and he's, and he's grabbing the frame that's presented to him, and that's a very important concept. The frame that's presented to him at the time, he grabs the inside, and, and he's got good feet. He's sealing off the defender from the runner, in this case the quarterback. But as we move forward, we're, we're not going to watch the grab. We know he's got a grab. We're going to watch the feet. And the feet get beat very quickly because the defenders uh, read the play very well, and he's, and he's blocking off the hole. So we no longer have good feet. The, the, the blocker is no longer sealing uh, the defender off from the runner because, because here's the path right here to the runner. The, defen the blocker would have to move his feet over to continue that seal uh, if, if, he, if, he could if he wants to maintain this grab. But he doesn't. He doesn't. He maintains the grab as, as the feet are clearly beat. We see the, the next part, material restriction. We see the defender making a, a, a concerted effort to get to the runner. He reaches his hand out trying to get there, and the hold keeps him from getting there. This is the most common type of offensive holding we see, on, especially on runs up the middle, and one we really shouldn't, shouldn't miss. Uh, umpires, certainly that's his center, but referees, you know, with a good wide position, also at the point of attack, should have an excellent shot at, at picking this up. We go to a similar play, and, and again, we're going to watch the center whose feet get beat. Think, think, feet get beat when you see these plays. And this is actually an outside grab. He gets under those shoulder pads, so he really never grabs inside. So he's in trouble right off the bat. And there we see, again, material restriction. Never forget that term, material restriction at the point of attack. Defender trying to make a play, can't because he's being held. Feet beat, classic offensive holding that we would want called in any game, any time. Very similar play on this one. Uh, we'll We'll, we'll watch the, uh, the right guard on somewhat of an off-tackle play. And again, we start with an outside grab, but this is not offensive holding at, at this time. There's no material restriction, plus he's got him sealed off. So really this has not developed into a foul yet, but certainly is, is something that would want to send your radar up. And sure enough, we see the feet get beat. We see the defender making that concerted effort, show us something to get to the runner, and he's held. He can't get it by the outside grab. This is a foul for offensive holding. Stretch plays. Let's look at a stretch play. Uh, the most common type we see here. And we're going to watch the right tight end. This, this is a foul that we really sh should always pick up. That, you know, we get the stretch play, the feet are beat, once again, outside grab, clearly at this point, and we've got our, our, our line of scrimmage official here. The referee really should have turned to the point of attack over here uh, to, to help out on this play. Uh, umpire is going to be on the back side over here. Referee needs to turn and referee this officiate this corner just as our linesman is officiating the corner. Uh, so, so, so we can have a couple of eyes on the most important block on this play. 
but certainly we see the outside grab, subsequently a spin, and, and this is a foul for offensive holding. Okay, let's talk about the passing game, and we're going to start by talking about the mechanics manual changes and, and the right tackle. We know that the manual change to give the ref, referee the opposite tackle over here on, on, uh, as his key at the snap. Uh, so that certainly in this case it leaves the the right tackle uncovered so we've got to get him covered the manual also states that that the referee is not absolved from officiating offensive holding anywhere in the line so depending on what happens with his key he can certainly help out moreover and this is a very important part of of, of the mechanics changes we no longer send the linesman downfield five yards at the snap unless his key takes him there such as when his key goes vertical and the reason, several reasons we do that, but, but the reason in this case is because he may be able to help out with this right tackle. And let's talk about this play. We've got a bunch up here, so as we know, uh, we're going to let them declare before we decide uh, who gets what man. And, and I'm going to let the play run, and we're going to see that they declare very quickly, and this is going to become the linesman's man. So, so at this point, He's running free, so the linesman doesn't really have to focus on him. He's got to keep him in his vision, but really no need to focus on him. So here, he can help out with the right tackle. Further, at this point, we see the referee's tackle over here is unthreatened. There is absolutely no threat for a foul right there. And if we come back, we, we pick that up very quickly. No threat with the left tackle. So at that point, the referee's got to open up his vision and find the guy that's getting beat. And certainly we see right here, that's developed very quickly. The right tackle is in a world of trouble. So our referee should kind of be looking in this direction over here. And, and, and as well as the, uh, as the linesman. Again, he's got nothing else. We, not, we haven't sent him down five yards. So he should be kind of looking here, and I, over here in, in this area to see if he can help out with line of scrimmage fouls. And, and as we let this go, it's, it's going to be a grasp and restrict, jerk around right there, an obvious foul that, that certainly we see here our referee did open up and, and did a terrific job of, of, of seeing this. And I do think our linesman could have, could have seen this too because he, here's his man, and I know the ball's in flight, but he's been running free for quite a while. So we do have coverage on this right tackle. We should have it on, on virtually every play, whether, whether he's got somebody keying him at the snap or not. In, in certain situations, the ump umpire would need to expand his vision as well. And we go to the end zone, and we see the, uh, the, the clear jerk uh, grasp and restrict around that, that is a foul that would, would, we would certainly want called. Okay, on this play, we're going to watch the left tackle right here. And we know he belongs to the referee, uh, but we also have double coverage, really, because the line judge has got him, uh, is going to help out as well even though the line judge has the back and we'll see the back coming through through the line of scrimmage so at that point the line judge will have to have a, a little peek at the uh, at the at the back coming through but but he can also have this in his in his in his vision as well and what we see here is is the is the left tackle is is beat very very quickly so our referee should be focused right in on that action and as he comes around we see that that grasp and restrict and we see the shoulder dip down even even though we don't even see the grab from here, we we know something really bad has happened to this uh, this this defensive end, and it is a foul for offensive holding. Okay, now we're going to look at a hook and restrict, and we're going to watch the left guard right here. And when we talk about hook and restrict, we're talking about the the blocker getting his arm outside the frame, certainly hooking the torso, the arm, some part of the defender's body, and redirecting or restricting his movement to the ball. We see number 70 clearly hooks the arm and keeps the defender, I mean, he obviously does not have good feet, keeps the defender from getting to the runner who's trying to make a play. This is a foul for offensive holding, and the category is hook and restrict. Again, we'll look at the left guard. We're looking right here at this left guard. And we're going to get another hook and restrict right at the point of attack. Line judge, line judge does a real nice job looking into the play at the point of attack and, and helping out on this one. We see the end zone, number 57, hook around the neck. This is a foul for clear material restriction, category hook and restrict. 
Now we talk a little bit more about hook and redirect. And, and we're looking again at the left guard who hooks around the upper body, partially around the neck, and redirects his opponent number 44 away from the quarterback. This is a foul for a hook and, re, hook and restrict and, because he redirects. There's clear material restriction on that play. Right guard, and, and, and here we're going to introduce the concept of a rip, which, which obviously many of you know. But when, when, the, uh, when the defender rips, as we see here, and we're looking at these two players right here, when, when he rips like that, the, the blocker is allowed to maintain that, that arm across the chest. And what he can do is drive the defender with that arm around the chest because we have this rip situation developed. What he can't do is, is have some sort of second act that, that creates a, 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 a restriction. And what we see right there is he bends the, bends the defender backwards. This is not what he's allowed to do. This becomes a foul for uh, a hook and restrict at the point of attack or right at the quarterback that we would want called. What he should have done is continued to drive his defender uh, outward uh, away from the quarterback and, and, and he could maintain that arm across the chest and it would not have been a foul. Okay, now let's talk about takedowns. And, and we're going to talk about this, this throwdown that we see right here. This is one we actually have to be careful for, of because in many cases we get either, either the first play, a, a second player, a double team situation where, where the defender is knocked down and it becomes just a push down, or it could just be a normal push down where, where we have an open hand that pushes the defender. What we're looking for is this twist that we see right there. That twist is what creates a foul and a throat foul for a throwdown in the offensive line. We certainly know that if he, if he grabs two hands full of jerseys and throws the defender down that way, that would also be a foul. But you do have to be alert when it's, when it's an open hand push down from uh, using either, either hand. This is becoming more and more common uh, as, defend, as blockers go to the ground and we're going to watch, uh, we're going to watch the right guard on this play. And he's going to tackle the defender around the legs. Uh, this is not unusual. It's very subtle, it's, and it's actually fairly difficult to pick up uh, this, this action because he, his, his arm's in, and, it, and it's somewhat difficult to see. But clearly right here, we see, we see a takedown. He, we see the, the blocker tackle the defender. And even though, let's talk about point of attack, this is clearly not the point of attack. So a grasp and restrict, uh, you know, a, a, a hook and restrict may not be a foul. But anything this major at this point has to be a foul. This is a takedown away from the point of attack and must be called. Uh, very similar play, we'll watch the left tackle. Just gets out, reaches out, and hooks the defender around the leg, takes him down. This is also a foul. Somewhat difficult to get up. Most, get, most likely the, the, the line of scrimmage official would have the best shot at it. But you have to be aware of, of teams and players that, that, uh, and their actions that, that, that create a foul in this situation. Another one we're seeing new, uh, fairly recently that's popping up is, the, and we'll watch the right tackle on this play, is a jerk down, and we're going to talk a little bit about, uh, about this as well. What a, what, a, what a blocker cannot do is grab and jerk the player to the ground. He can get on top and push down, but he can't grab, and here we see two handfuls of jersey, grab and jerks him right to the ground. Uh, happens very quickly, so you have to have, have, have a good focus on that type of action. It's clearly a foul that must be called. The next type of takedown we get is a reverse takedown, and we're going to watch what happens to R4 right here. And he's going to be the back judge's man. And I'll circle him as we get closer, and we're looking right here at this player. We get the hand outside, around the back, a grab of the jersey, and the reverse takedown. Now we do have to be careful on these plays that it's just not an overpower situation. So you want to see the hand around the body or a grasp of the shoulders or the jerseys that really pulls him down on top or over him to have a foul for a reverse takedown. 
wide receiver at the top and we're going to spend some time on wide receiver blocking because it's a it's a unique aspect of blocking and and offensive holding we have the same same types of uh of guidelines but they're you got to understand what they're trying to do and let's talk a little bit about that generally the outside uh wide receiver and the corner the corner is outside contain so he's he's usually just happy to be there uh but we get a foul here for the normal grasp and restrict and, and it normally happens when that outside contain breaks down and, and, and the, the, the corner is able to drive the defender more to the inside, force the, the man to the outside, and he reaches and can't get it. I mean, it can happen when he cuts in as well, but normally this is, this is where you're more likely to have a foul. Again, we'll watch the wide receiver at the bottom. Field judges, side judges have to stay focused on your key. This is a grasp and restrict. Outside grab, spins, clearly a foul. Wide receiver at the bottom, not really grasp and restrict. We're looking right here, and this is why we have to stay focused, fo stay, stay so focused. It's a reverse takedown. Grabs him and just pulls him down over, over the top of him. And, and certainly if we, have a, if we have our focus in the right place, we should not miss that. Uh, those, those wide receivers do some things that uh, somewhat are more, more unusual than other players. But, but as we see here, we have to stay focused on that reverse takedown. It is a foul. Okay, now let's talk about plays that are not fouls. They are equally, if not more important, than the, than the types of plays that are, that are fouls. So we have, to, we have to really understand, focus on our, our keys, and see the whole action. Continuing with the wide receiver concept, concept we'll, start with, we'll look at the wide receiver at the top here. And this is what I'm talking about outside contain. Good block there at the beginning. And, and this corner, his job is to make this receiver stay to the inside so pursuit can catch up. And we see somewhat of a grab, but we also see the, the, the blocker, the wide receiver, with good feet throughout. And we see him driving him to the sideline, driving the sideline. And there at the last minute, we, we may see a, a slight restriction, but is, it is not enough. The defender has not done not enough to earn a foul here. The, res, the receiver has, has just, it's just been an excellent block, excellent drive toward the sideline, taking his man out of the play completely. No foul on this play. Here we see the end zone. And again, yeah, is there a grab? Yes, but we do not feel this is material restriction based on, on the roles, responsibilities, and the guidelines. Uh, for blocking. Wide receiver at the bottom. We see an inside grab with good feet on this one. Again, no foul. Inside grab. Takes the defender where he wanted to go. The runner ran right by it. No foul. The right guard. We'll watch the right guard on this play and he's just going to get on top and fall on his defender. This is perfectly legal. There's no grab, no restrict. The defender takes himself out of the play. This is not a foul for offensive holding. Wing back. Let's watch the wing back right here, number 85. And this is what we're talking about blocks what's presented to him. Is he getting the front chest? No, but that's not what's presented to him. What's presented to the, to the wing back is this shoulder right here. So he can have an inside grab of that shoulder as, as long as he doesn't restrict into some other way. And what he does here, he continues to drive. Inside grab, drive, this is not a foul for offensive holding. Blocks what pre what's presented, inside grab, drives, his de drives the defender out of the play, no foul. The center blocks what's presented and drives. Blocks what's presented and drives. Inside, we consider this an inside grab, drives, and ends up with a push down. No foul for offensive holding. This is one I think uh, many of us that have been around a long time have, have been beaten on at least once in, in our career. And, and we're going to watch the, the left guard. And we're, it's this, this block right here. Who's in, and he's in trouble, so we're, we're really watching where we're supposed to be watching. But as we go forward, we see he's going to go to the ground, but there's a trip right here. He trips over, not a tripping foul certainly, he just trips over the, the left tackle's leg and goes to the ground. And it, and it appears that he's been taken down because he's been beaten so badly. But the, but the, the fact that he trips over the, the opponent uh, makes this not a foul. So we really have to have a good focus on the entire action before we throw the flag.
The next play is going to demonstrate one of our philosophies. If we see action that is material restriction and enough for a foul for offensive holding, but the runner is being tackled by a different player, then we will not throw a flag for offensive holding. And, and in, on this play, we're going to watch the, the left guard. And it's going to be an obvious hold right there. He's just going to tackle his defender right here. But we also, but we see, but what we see is the runner in the grasp of a diff, of another opponent being tackled. So there's no advantage gained right here, uh, and and that's what we look for in in offensive holding. Certainly, we look for an advantage being gained. No advantage on this play because the runner is being tackled. Now, if this runner were to break free at this point, we'll come back with I believe we'll come back with a foul for offensive holding. We can throw it a little bit late, but certainly, the runner does get tackled. No foul on this play. And the last play we'll, we'll look at, we talked earlier about a jerk down. And, and on this one, we're going to talk about the push down. The right tackle is going to get on top and just push down the opponent. He pushes him down right there. This is what he can do. But what he can't do here, we see at the end, is this. we would want unnecessary roughness for that action right there. Uh, not really part of this tape, but certainly we would want that as a foul. But it is not a foul for offensive holding. In summary, each official must completely understand the concepts we've discussed in this video and more importantly, use this verbiage when talking amongst ourselves and with coaches and players so that we're all saying the same thing uh, throughout the country. We must consistently apply these guidelines for offensive holding on every play of every game. Uh, we owe it to our coaches, we owe it to our players, and we owe it to, owe it to ourselves to establish consistency in this crucial area. And actions that violate these guidelines must be penalized regardless of when or where they occur. We hope you found this video useful and we wish you the best of luck in the remainder of the 2012 season.